So many times in uh, strength training, uh, in strength and conditioning, we think that more is better. And how can we get more and more and more and more in? More is better. That's all there is to it. You know, that's, uh, I know whenever I was younger, that's the way that I looked at training. We're going to go ahead and look and see here the effects of a modified German volume training program on muscular hypertrophy and strength. And just whenever we sit here and think about it, just from the title alone, German volume training, we should think 10 sets of 10. Hypertrophy is related to time under tension, and 10 sets of 10 is a lot of volume. That's a high amount of volume, so it should have a high amount of hypertrophy. Well, strength, I don't know, but let's see what the results are here. With the German volume training, uh, German volume training became really popular. I, you know, I don't know how many years ago, but I can remember it back in the 90s uh, being a, a big thing and, and trying it whenever I was a uh, young uh, teenager, preteen maybe even. But German volume training is the uh, 10 set of 10 method, and it's been advocated as an effective training practice to enhance muscular hypertrophy. Because, like we had mentioned, that time under tension is greatly related to uh, hypertrophy. And having that great of a volume is going to have a high amount of time under tension. Uh, thus, we're going to be able to put on a lot of muscle. Uh, the German volume training sessions traditionally involve 10 sets of 10 repetitions. Excuse me. Uh, using no more than two compound exercises for that. The loads are usually pretty light-ish, you know, about 60% of a 1RM, or uh, sometimes they'll look at it as a uh, 20RM, and 20RM is about, you know, 60%, give or take. Uh, are some people higher than that and others lower? Absolutely, but it's, uh, you know, it's the, the law of averages or flaw of averages, as it were. Um Recovery between so how long are the the rest in between the sets? You know we've got uh, not a tremendous amount of time. Uh, what uh, what we're looking at here is the sixty to ninety seconds. Now we know that if we have those short rest periods, then we can have a greater amount of lactate that's stimulated. We know that lactate is, it goes through a cascade of processes to where it's going to stimulate uh, human growth hormone and IGF-1. So with those two things, we, uh, we know that we can, uh, uh, those are anabolic hormones. So we should be seeing a pretty good spike there, right? Well, let's look here. The subjects, 19 to 24 years of age, uh, they did not have any existing musculoskeletal disorders. Uh, they weren't allergic to whey protein, and they report reported to have not used anabolic steroids or other legal or illegal agents. So no supplements or uh, anything else for the past year, other than maybe some whey protein, but uh, you know, creatine, steroids, etc. They they did not report having taken any of those. So let's look at the training. Now we can see that. Everybody did the same thing for exercises three, four, and five. On exercises one and two, everybody did the same exercises, but they either did a five set approach for a lower volume or the 10 set approach for the German volume training. Uh, they would have, you know, the, the training, the session one, session two, session three, basically think Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I do not believe they did them uh, back to back. Uh, but uh, so they, they typically had greater than 24 hours uh, of rest. So flat bench press, lat pull down, incline bench, seated row and crunches or day one. Day two is leg press, lunges. Uh, leg extensions, leg curls, calf raises. And then day three is a shoulder press, upright row, uh, triceps, biceps, and, and sit-ups with a twist. So it's pretty standard, you know, nothing too outlandish there uh, as far as what we're talking about with the German volume training. A pretty responsible approach here. Now, if we look how do they measure the muscle thickness? Well, they did it with ultrasound. Uh, and I think it's pretty cool because they looked at the thickness of the muscle from the femur to uh, the posterior and the femur to the anterior. So they looked at that thickness uh, from the, the scan. Uh, so that, that's a, a pretty novel 
<coughs> Excuse me. That's a pretty novel means of uh, doing the training. Not training, uh, doing the muscle thickness. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I don't have one, I, and I want one. So I, maybe that's why I think it's so cool. If we look at the differences, the initial to final, we see that for the 10 set approach, well, did they get stronger? Yeah, yeah, no, they did. And they had a, a lot of volume. Let's, so let's look at the strength for the 10 sets. So they went from uh, 60.7 to 64.2. Uh, and that might be the percent of 1RM. Yep, so they, w they just increased the percentage of 1RM up a little bit. Uh, and they did that for all of the different movements. Now, who caused a, a greater increase? Well, let's look at the five set versus the the ten set here. We see a 3.5% uh, increase on bench for the ten set, where we saw about a 5.7% increase on the uh, the five set. Uh, the lat pull down, they went from 58.8 to 60.8, so we see a 2% improvement there. 4% uh, on the, the lat pull down, and the leg press is a 13% a uh, versus a 17% for the, uh, the five set. Now, if we look at the total loads in kilograms, though, we see that there's a, a massive difference. Of course, they did double the volume, and that double the volume shows uh it, we can look the 2300 versus 5000 so it's a little over double on the bench press volume the uh the uh, 8 3800 kilos versus uh 1800 kilos we see a 2000 kilo difference there on the lat pull down the leg press 24000 kilos versus 12000 kilos really almost 25 to almost 13 so we see that man that they they do nearly doubled it again uh, more than doubled it again now let's look at the differences though in the mass. So if we look at just simply total body mass, we see that uh, we saw an increase of about, oh, um, a kilo and a half uh, for the 10th set and uh, almost a three kilo, 2.7 kilo for the five set. But then now let's look at the lean and we see a 1.2 kilo gain there and a 1.8 kilo gain uh, for the um, uh, five set. Now we see that there was no significant difference in the program times the time. So the P of T, okay, what is, what is that P of T? Well, what that's looking for is time. So it's looking at pretest versus post test in this first P column. So pre to post, both of the uh, total and lean were significant increases but when we look at g times t so that's group times time interaction there is no significant difference there uh, for the fat mass uh, we see that it went up a little bit for the 10 set and for the five set not significantly uh, we look at the percentage of body fat and we see again that we have non-significant uh, increases if we look at the regions for the trunk uh, it was significant pre to post for that 0.3 kilos uh, within the trunk for the 10 set and the 1.1 for the 5 set. And here we actually see something that is a significant effect for group. So for the trunk mass, the 5 set was actually far better than the 10 set. Well, I say far better. It was significantly better. With the effect size of 0.2 showing that actually is a small effect. So was it better? Yeah, it was better. Not a tremendous amount. Uh, then we look at the arms, and we see pre to post, again, we had significant improvements, about a 0.3 kilo for the, uh, the 10 set and a 0.6 kilo for the 5 set. Uh, it's significant. It did not reach significant for the group. Uh, the legs, well, we see that there was no significant improvement there. Uh, that's just whatever we're looking at it from kilos. Now, if we look at the millimeters of thickness, uh, let's just simply look over at the time. And we see that biceps, triceps, anterior and posterior thigh, there was no significant improvements from pre to post there. Uh, so what is this telling us? It's like, well, wait a second. How come our arm was significant 
in terms of kilos, but in thickness it wasn't. Well, the arm is not broken out into biceps and triceps, so I bet I think it's probably the the summation of the muscle thickness that uh, made this significance occur, rather than one individual muscle. Uh, as we can see. Uh, the effect sizes are, are moderate there, even though they're not significant, and I think that's what's feeding in uh, to the improvement of mass of the arm. Uh, the legs, well, it was non-significant up there, and it's, re and it's also non-significant uh, down in the muscle thickness as well. The results for the strength. Well, we talked about the percentage of 1RM change, so they were able to up the percentage of 1RM, but let's look at the actual changes in strength. Now, if we look here for the bench press, uh, of course, this is the most important. Uh, i joking about that. It's because I, I like the bench press. Uh, we see that, hey, the 10 set saw an increase of four kilos. The five set saw one of almost, oh, well, let's see, that's 10.9 kilos. Uh, that, that's a pretty good increase there, if you ask me. Both were significantly better than baseline, but the uh, group in time showed that the bench press was better at strength than was, uh, I'm sorry, the five set was better on strength on the bench press than was the 10 set. Now, if we look down at the next one for the lat pull down, we see the increases in about three kilos, just, just a little shy, 2.8 for the 10 set, a eight kilo, uh, 8.6 kilo improvement for the five set. Uh, they were both significant for baseline and the, um, uh, excuse me, the uh, five set is significantly better than the 10 set there. Now, if we look down to the bottom for the leg press, we see a 12 kilo improvement on the 10 set. We see a 23 kilo improvement on the five set. Uh, both are statistically significant for uh, time. However, it is not significant for group times time, uh, as we see here. While it's listed as such by the figure legend, I think that that is just simply a, uh, an error. Uh, they, that should be the double cross showing a significant effect for, for time. Uh, because the group, even though it's given that double line, that's supposed to signify group and time. It didn't. It didn't hit that. Now let's look at the effect sizes. So yeah, these were important, but how important? And we see that uh, we've got both moderate effects on the bench press and the lat pull down. So what is that telling us? Well, it's telling us that the German volume training program is no more effective than the five set program for increasing hypertrophy and strength. And quite frankly, the strength is what was the main thing that improved. To maximize hypertrophic effects, it is recommended that four to six sets per exercise be performed as it seems gains will plateau beyond this set range and may even regress due to overtraining. Now, one of the things that this brings to mind is the meta-analysis from uh, Matt Ray that I've also done a video on where he found that the biggest results, regardless if somebody was super trained or uh, not, that four sets per body part, that was about, uh, that was the peak. That was the best results if you were uh, a novice or a uh, trained individual uh, when you were looking at strength. And we saw that the five-set approach is it four? Well, no, it's not, but it's pretty close. It was far better than 10. And if you remember from that study, we saw that there was a declining uh, effect size after they got to five and, and six sets, that the, the effect size just kept uh, shrinking. And I believe six sets was the, uh, five or six sets was the end of what they examined there. So if you like information like this, I've mentioned this several times, but uh, I forgot to put on the, the slide here. Come join us down here at the U. 
Now, we've obviously got the undergraduate program, and this is from my Kinesiology 399 Neuromuscular Basis of Training class. We've got undergraduate exercise physiology uh, that is a, a fantastic program with instructors like uh, Joe Signorelli, Kevin Jacobs, Wes Smith, Brian Biagioli, uh, the list goes on, Arlette Perry. Uh, we've got uh, we've got a fantastic faculty down here. Uh, we've got a, a master's uh, in applied exercise physiology that has a strength and conditioning focus, uh, and it, and you would have people like myself and Brian Biagioli for that uh, those classes involved in strength and conditioning. Uh, we've also uh, it's we're just waiting. We'll probably unveil in January a online coaching education. A certificate program where uh, we've got one the first thing that we've got coming up is a eight-week class where you will be going through step by step with me about how to do the different training programs uh, we'll talk about needs analysis basic programming ACL posterior chain some of the bigger uh, impacts for our profession that hey if you don't understand this let me help you. Uh, you know, one of the things that I really want to do is give back to the strength and conditioning community, and uh, I think education is about the best way for me to do that. Uh, so if you enjoy this material, you want more like it, come join us at the U. Uh, social media, you can follow me at jbrianman uh, on any of the platforms, uh, Twitter and Instagram. I need to get with it and get on Snapchat and whatever else. Uh, and hopefully you... Uh, Got something from this, and if not, hopefully at least would help you go to sleep. I'll probably listen to this tonight to help me with my insomnia. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me uh, on social media or email bman at miami.edu. Hope to see you soon.